on this episode of the Grow Your Video Business Podcast, how to connect with clients so they come across better on camera. Learn a ninja tactic that Jordan uses to find new retainer clients, and finally, why the mindset of what do I have to lose can actually help you win. With everything that you have to do, how can you grow your video business without burning out, actually working with the right clients and doing projects that you love? Well, I'm glad you asked. Every episode, I sit down with a guest and we talk about the issues that you face and give you insights that will help you be more productive, get paid what you're worth, and be more creative. Oh, uh, did I mention that you get more clients? I'm Ryan Coral, and you're listening to the Grow Your Video Business Podcast. My friend, I am so glad that you're here today. Lots of new stuff going on. The Studio Sherpa's Mastermind kicks off next week, which I'm just utterly thrilled about. Um, our free Facebook group community is nearing 1,000 members. If you want to join that community, go to studiosherpas.com slash community. And I'm currently putting the final touches on the Video Business Academy. It's a long time coming. I'm super, super pumped. Uh, also, I just got back from an amazing treat, re retreat, treat, if treat and retreat, we're walking on a bridge. <laughs> I just got back from an amazing retreat with my other mastermind group, and oh my goodness, uh, it, it was blow your mind fantastic. Being in person with other people, masterminding, brainstorming, hot seating, all of the things, uh, and just doing some life together with some incredibly talented and soulful people was so good, just filled me up. Uh, my wife got to come. It was Really, really awesome. Um, our production team is literally crushing it. People, you know, are constantly like, "Hey, how's business?" And you know, eight months ago, I'm like, eh, "It's it's getting better." Two months ago, I'd be like, "Wow, like things are humming along." Like literally last week, we had production dates with different clients six out of eight days in a row. It was insane. So I am super, super grateful. Um, we just had our biggest month of the year with just over six figures in new work signed, which is, oh my goodness, it is so fun. It is super exciting. Um, my continued hope is that the stuff that I'm learning uh, that has worked for, for me and for my team, uh, along with all the other videographers and people that I'm connected to in studios, that you can learn faster and implement the things in your own video business, how you can approach clients, how you can sell what you offer better, um, how you can value your own skill, um, how you do what you do in a way that delights your clients and fills you up. That's my hope. That's what I want uh, to do here. So if that sounds good, then you're in the right spot. Make sure that you are subscribed to the show. Uh, if you haven't already done that, uh, do it. Uh, if you're not following me or us, uh, you can follow us. We're on the gram at Grow Your Video Business, uh, also on Facebook and YouTube. Um, so, yes. Now it is time to hear a word from our awesome sponsor who also provides financial help, accounting, tax stuff uh, to my production company and my personal company, my personal self. Yeah, there. Uh, and then after that, we'll dive into this week's episode. If there was one thing that could have ended my business 17 years ago, it would be because of the numbers. I hate accounting, taxes, W-9s, W-2s, W-40s, <laughs> spreadsheets, all of that stuff. And I hate it mostly because I'm honestly, I'm afraid of it. I'm just not great with numbers. If this sounds familiar or if you're so new in your business that it's not even on your radar yet, you need Core Group. Core Group can help you create financial systems and tax strategies that you need so you can grow profitably. And they've been doing this for over 20 years. They become an extension of your team so that you can stay in your lane of expertise and then lean on them to help guide you along the way. For me, having a team of experts in my corner to help keep track of our books and a just to make sure that we're budgeting for taxes appropriately, to have an actual strategy for our taxes and our accounting is priceless. And it allows me to sleep easier at night knowing that I don't have to be an expert in that arena. If you wanna avoid surprises in your video business, 
and you want experienced help building a plan for the future that you want, both professionally and personally, head over to studiosherpas.com slash core for more information. And when you're ready to set up a free consult with them, make sure to mention Studio Sherpas for a special discount too. I got your back. Get more out of your accountant. Go to studiosherpas.com slash core. What's up, friends? Welcome to the Grow Your Video Business Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Coral, and I think I already said that. So welcome to this episode of the podcast. My guest today is Jordan Burns. Jordan is a video producer, DP editor, and founder of JSB Video located in Seattle, Washington. Jordan, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ryan. Glad to be here. I'm glad you're here too. Boy, we had some snafus leading up to this point, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Definitely some uh, weird internet connection issues, but you know, glad we got that resolved. Yes. Well, tell me what what do you do? Like, I, I know you know in your title you got all that different stuff, but what do you what do you spend the majority of your time doing? Oh man, I feel like I just spend a majority of my time doing like admin work and reaching out to clients. Mm. Um, but no, I, I do a wide variety of different things. Um, I like to kind of keep a balance. Like I said, you know, you, I have sort of a long list of things, you know, producer, DP, and editor. I really like to, to space out my time. I feel like too much time on set and I get tired and my back starts to hurt. And, you know, you start to kind of like get broken like down me. carrying heavy equipment all the time. And um, so I like to, to take some time and go into the editing booth and sit there for a few weeks. But then I get a little antsy to get on the road or, you know, back into the studio or something like that. So I find myself kind of going back and forth. Um, a lot of the, the type of work that I do um, can be anywhere from like documentaries to commercials to um, podcasts and things like that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I feel like that what you what you just how you explained what you do is part of the the juice that like we all are like, oh, yeah, man, like, you know, I get, you know, if I want to be creative, I got that time. And then when I'm like tapped out, then it's like time to, you know, call some clients or follow up or do admin or whatever. Uh, that is part of the beauty in what we get to do, because if if we get bored or tired or we hit a creative wall, there's there's always something else that that can be done. So uh, that is that is a nice part of what we do. Yeah, definitely. The balance is, is really important. I think, you know, I, I could be one, one thing or the other, but I would get bored doing one thing at, at a time, you know, and yeah. when you have the the skills to do everything right, you want to be able to kind of bounce around and, and nourish those things. I always say, you know, I'm a jack of all trades or, you know, maybe not a master of, of none, but you know, I can kind of get my <laughs> hands dirty anywhere I want to. Yeah. And, and I would say that that would be, part of the challenge uh in in being a solopreneur uh you know you you have to you have to learn all of the things mm -hmm. i remember learning dreamweaver which is like a web page builder like back yeah. forever ago and that was super fun and i was totally into it and then i realized i'm like man i'm spending a lot of time in dreamweaver when there's like a lot of other <laughs> aspects to running a video company that maybe i should be spending more time in so that that does become a trap and i would say i'm i'm kind of at this point uh, in my business i just finished a book called uh uh what is it procrastinate on purpose and mm -hmm. Uh, my biggest takeaway, one of my biggest takeaways from that book is is the value of our time and how uh, it, it it is compounding. You know, it's like money. When you invest money uh, the right way, it compounds and it just kind of, kind of keeps building. And when you're intentional with your time and you procrastinate on purpose, not just out of like, you know, because you don't have a plan, uh, it, it's amazing where you can save time and be more efficient and work on the things that really move the business forward and i would say that's that's one of the biggest challenges that that most all of us face is we feel like or we get in in this rut or or we feel trapped and think that we're the only one that knows how to do this thing we're the only one that can we're the i, I can't afford to have anybody help me with that because it's just meaning like going to the bank and like dropping checks off that's what i used to do you don't have to do that anymore you can like take pictures with your phone but you know all these little like errands and and just things it's like well i'm not gonna be able to find somebody that can do that thing so i've got to do it and there's you know 30 minutes out of my day or 45 minutes an hour and you multiply that like two or three times a week or you know seven or eight times a month and it's like we lose hours of our time doing tasks that really have nothing to do with how we're truly gifted and what we're truly excited about and what people are paying us money and sometimes a lot of money to do 
Right. But I think some of those taking time away from it, especially in a creative space, right? You need to be able to rest your brain and rest your body from doing that, that passion, that video stuff all the time, because you can just get overloaded, right? I, I have a mailbox that I have, you know, I have a virtual mailbox that people send mail to. And um, it's about a 30 minute walk from my place. And I really enjoy that taking that time, maybe once or twice a week and taking a walk down to go get it because I get to get, I get to out of my office, I get to get exercise and then I get to, you know, just think and not be bombarded by calls and clients and, you know, editing, you know, stitching things together. What effects am I going to use? You know, you know, putting all the camera gear together. Like it, it gives your, your mind a, a proper rest in the middle of the day. And um, I think it's really valuable. Yes, I agree. I, I think, I mean, it's, it, that idea of like, you know, putting off the things that you don't have to do right now, uh, the tyranny of the urgent feeling like, oh, if, if somebody's calling, I need to answer or somebody emails me, I need to respond when really that's that's probably not necessarily true. Like people don't need you to respond right away. Uh, a lot of times, maybe sometimes, yes. But uh, when you're on deadline for a project, that's probably more important than uh, a lot of the other things that, you know are vying for our time. But I love that, you know, I love that you kind of talk about like having this, like this time away, which I'm a, I'm a huge advocate for. I love, uh, I love when I don't have anything like, like on a Friday, if I don't have anything planned, if I don't have any meetings, uh, I can run errands. I can just do things that I want to do. And I think about my business, right? Mm -hmm. It's very intentional or, or I'm just like, you know, going about my business, doing things that, you know, I'm at Costco, not even thinking about, and, and I see something and I'm like, Oh, you know what? Like, or I see a commercial or I, you know, I see something. And I'm like, Oh, that's pretty cool. Like, I wonder if we could do something like that and how would we do it? And, and so, you know, here's my mind doing this, but like, if I'm behind my computer, always editing, always shooting, always, do, you know, doing that stuff, it's hard to think about ways that I can grow my business. Like that's, there's, there's some definite challenges there when you don't, when you don't let your, your brain or your, your really your soul have some space to breathe. Right. Sometimes you got to step away to find that inspiration. Agree. Or as I like to say, agree to disagree. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so what's uh, what, what would you say is working in your video business right now? I think the main thing that I found that my clients like about me is, you know, you get to go in with a bit of confidence. And I think that really separates, um, you know, a good video professional and a bad one, right? Is there's so many people in this industry that I find that are, you know, really, really good at their craft, but don't know how to communicate with clients properly, mm. right? I, I really focus on creating a solid relationship. When I look at the reviews that I get from clients, it's always, he made me feel really comfortable. He, was you know really personable you know he really he, re he worked really well with our team and made us all you know have have fun doing it and i think that's something that people sometimes forget about this industry especially from the client perspective is that when you hire a video pro professional to come in and you have the lights on and the cameras going that's a big deal you know people kind of dream about that moment yeah. you know you're getting interviewed and you know you get to come take they're always taking behind the scenes photos for their instagram to show their friends and family and you really want to make it an experience for them because they'll come back for more because they get addicted to that feeling. Well, and then there's then there's the people that are like, oh, gosh, tomorrow I'm, I'm going to be interviewed by Jordan. And I just I hate being on a camera or whatever. But to be able to bring that like sense of peace and like, hey, it's going to be easy. It's going to be kind of fun and like let people not worry like that's you know, that's part of that. And it sounds like that's kind of like what you're able to bring to the table for your clients. Yeah, cause I get that all the time, especially with like brand new clients is, you know, you pull up the cameras and they see how big the camera is and they're like, oh man, like, like they, they, they start it's to sweat real. a little bit and then it takes yeah. some time to, to relax them, make them feel comfortable, remind them that they're not alone. Everyone feels this way in front of the camera, yeah. right? And over time, you know, if you make it a fun experience for them, they will, they will be better at, in, in the interview and at the video yeah. and they'll want to do more with you. You know, they'll get, they'll be more open to sharing ideas with you. They'll be, you know, more interactive with the video. And I really find that that has, has been one of the, the biggest um, successes in my career so far is being able to create a comfortable environment for my clients. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So you have like incense that you burn and some candles that you lay <laughs> out to kind of 
No, I'm just kidding. What what no, what, what is part of this? Deep into it. It's, it's just you know putting creating a nice inviting environment, right? And making them feel comfortable and reminding them that you know the feelings that they're feeling are you know normal, right? And I think it's you know bringing the energy with the questions and forming them in a way that you know really lets them shine as an individual. And then you know you have to be you know very engaged with with the way when you're when you're working with them and you know, encouraging and positive. What's a, give me an example. So let's just say you're going to send me out to do my first interview with somebody. Uh, what would you tell me to like how to make the client? Like, you know, don't, don't just tell me like, well, bring the energy. Like, I'm like, I don't, what, right. what, is, what does that actually mean? Like give, give me some of the, the tips that you would, you would share with somebody in order to be able to do that successfully. Hmm. I think, you know, it's, it's really just kind of going in with a smile, first of all, right? That's great. Definitely That's good have that positive attitude in yourself. Be confident in yourself. You know, ask them questions. You know, make it that personal connection right off the bat before the cameras even come out, right? Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, I worked recently. I did a uh, testimonial video for a, um, like a medical company, senior advocacy specialists. And they work with, you know, seniors and getting them post post care, um, like post op care and things like that. And um, I went to this woman's house. She's the, the founder of the company. She's a doctor, big, beautiful house. Right. And you walk in and she's got her family there and you start to create, you know, conversation with them. Right. Talk about, you know, oh, your, your home is so beautiful. Right. Like, oh, you look great. Let's, you know, let's go check out the space. You know, you really want to make them feel good, make them feel that they're prepared, make them feel that, you know, elevate their mood before going into yeah. it as much as possible and so that when the cameras are rolling they're already comfortable yeah i love that yeah one of my favorite things to do i uh, learned this from my friend patrick is before well as we're set up and like the person's coming to sit down or get in front of the camera or whatever um my teammate will let me know that we're, we're running camera and you know have the person sit down and uh and then i'll say something like well hey before we start like just tell me like you know we were talking over there you know at the coffee bar or whatever tell me tell me again like why do you love you know what you do or like you know tell like what's the like and make it just feel like very conversational and like kind of like have your people not looking at the camera so there's you know there's it just seems very unassuming and like, oh, they're, they're not even rolling. Well, let me tell you how I really feel. And then they give you like the most epic, like heartfelt, like honest, open, authentic, you know, soundbite. And then you're like, cool. All right. Well, we got what we needed. And they're like, wait, what? And you're like, oh yeah, no, we're rolling the whole time. Right, right, right. Uh, it's, it's a good trick. I like it. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, what would you say in your business that you're, that you're really working on that you want to be better? I think I, I really just want to work on growth right now. Um, I've been freelancing just pretty much recently. I started my business. Uh, I think this is on month four and I've already seen consistent growth through growth throughout. Um, I think I, since for, I was working a full-time job as a producer for this, this really like low budget television show um, that I got hired to do like right out of college. And I did that for about two and a half years and I left when I moved to Seattle um when i got like my first like really good like freelance opportunity i'm like i can't pass this up yeah. and it really inspired me to keep going and i every month I've, I've doubled my revenue and doubled my clients and so i'm really just working on like every month just get to that trying to beat myself and get to that next level and that next you know bigger client you know invest a little bit more in gear invest a little bit more in scaling the business and bringing on people and things like that um like i'm, I'm working on and hiring like like a junior editor to kind of come yeah. on and take some of the 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 backlogs or some of the clients that I brought on earlier on that now I don't have time to do, but I've created the systems so that it's easy to edit. So now I can bring somebody on, train them, teach them, and I can go on and continue to to grow while still keeping my other clients happy. Yeah, yeah, that's great. What about uh, like in three years, like what would you say the goal would be for your business? What does it look like? What does it feel like? How much you work in? How much you making? Right. I mean, I'd like to, you know, continue the growth that I'm on now. I'd like to right. I'd like to double what I'm doing right now in three years. I'd like to be able to open up possibly, you know, a studio of my own, get out of just working out of my home office here and be able to have, you know, a solid team around, right. And, and have revolving clients. I think my, my end dream is, you know, I love Seattle. I recently moved here but I don't want to be here forever. So one of the challenges that I'm, that I'm facing is, okay, I'm building a good business here. I'm getting clientele, I'm making my, a name for myself in this city, but I want to be elsewhere, right? I want to be able to, to work 
nationally, internationally, wherever I want. So I think really what I'm focusing on is diversifying my clientele. We plan that my, my, my girlfriend and I want to move to London someday, right? I'm, I'm half English. So it's one of those things that like, okay, internationally is really big. So getting those clients internationally, you know, productions that are coming out here to the U.S. I've worked on a couple, you know, um, natural history documentaries out here that are, you know, and natural history is mostly um, in Bristol, uh, England. So if I get to kind of create those relationships now, by the time I move there, I'll already be able to kind of set up set up shop again and, you know, hopefully not start at zero, right, like I did when I moved to Seattle. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, that's cool. I, I like having that, you know, thinking about what, what you know, three years, uh, because then you can really work backwards and say, what should I be doing today? It's like, oh, start building those relationships so that when it is time to move, like you're you're exactly what you're saying. You're not starting from ground zero. What, what uh I mean, you've had success. You talk about like doubling your business and you've done that for the last couple of years. Um, what would you say is like part of the key uh, to that success? Like how, how do you do that? And how would you, how would you recommend somebody uh, do that? I think it's being able to find clients that you can kind of, you know, get on retainer, right? Almost people, you, you want people to come back and that comes back to that personal aspect of the business, right? Where you'd be able to, if you're able to create a comfortable environment for somebody and they like you, They'll come back for more, right? And then at some point, you can scale up to a point where, okay, I've worked with you for so long. Here's a friend of mine who's going to come in, you know, and kind of take the, and kind of take over that. I've trained them; they know what's going on. They know you. They've kind of been introduced over time, right? And then you can kind of move on to the next thing, right? And I'm sure you've you've gone through some of that that similar stuff earlier on in your business, right? As you scale up, right, you have to be able to to delegate, and that's that point, right? right now that I'm at is, okay, how do I move on to the delegation point? Because I have all these clients and I'm only one person. I can't do it all. Right. I'm, I, I talk all the time about like all the clients that I'm working with right now, my girlfriend, she can't even like keep up with it. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, when you are, you talk about retainer clients and mm -hmm. I think that that is, um, something that a lot of people are very interested in, right? If you just have to sell one time, you know, to one client and then there's like more work to come. That's great. So what kind of, what kind of projects, because I've, I've done a lot of projects for all kinds of people and businesses over 17 years. I'm curious to know, like what kind of clients need more than one video? Because most of the people that call us looking for video just need one video. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you start that conversation and, or what are the types of clients that need more than what, one kind of video? I think for me, a lot of the clients that I've had that have been a long time um, are clients that work in, you know, media, right? So if you have a client that, uh, I'll give you an example. Um, I work for this this client called Terracotta. They're a, uh, they're a startup company right now, but they do uh, art. They have like art, it's um, like online art shows, right? So they work with, some of the uh, best artists in the world and they create these, these courses, like these 12 month courses. Um, and they hire me on as a, uh, to kind of help them with the media side of their media and technology company. So I will go down and I will shoot a lot of their, their content for them and I will edit a lot of their content for them. It's very simple show, right? Which is one of the shows that like, I wanna be able to pass on to somebody as an editor, right? But I'll go down. I went down to LA a few weeks ago, and I worked with this amazing watercolor artist named Thomas Shala. He is unbelievable what he what he can do with you know watercolor. And we shot this beautiful promo for their for their website and for their courses. But there's a 12 month course there that he is, that he's trying to make, and these are hour long episodes, like five six hours a month, right? So that's a lot of content that needs to be edited, right? So that's a lot of work that you have, you know, on retainer for a long period of time. And then as they scale up, you scale up with them. So finding those clients right there that are going to need a lot of work over time is really important because when things get slow on your end, you at least have something to fall back on. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's a good point. Like, let's say you're just starting your business out and you're like, man, I would love to, if I found one retainer client, uh, where should I start looking? Should I, should I just like Google uh, media companies in Detroit area? Like wh wh where would you start? Well, I found a lot of success on Upwork actually. 
that was really the the big the big selling point for me was using that. I I that was probably I probably do ninety percent of my business through Upwork, um, because there's always people posting jobs. You just create. I created a cover letter that I just use all the time um, that sells myself really really well, very honestly. Um, and I'm one of my part of my morning routine with that is I wake up and instead of checking Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or anything like that. I check Upwork. What's the what's the latest job postings that are up right now, right? And if you can get into the habit of doing that and looking at the local the local you know media job posting boards, I know there's there's other ones like Mandy and you know um, Backstage or whatever what whatever those are. You know if you get into a kind of a habit of checking those job listings, Craigslist even, right? You will find stuff. You'll find jobs. And then once you get into the to the industry and you start working with people, your name starts to pop up more. And then you don't have to do that as much. And so these are people posting on Upwork that are looking for video. Yeah. Oh, okay. video, video production, video editing. Yeah. Um, all kinds of different things. Yeah, I guess I've never, I've never thought about Upwork as. No, that's really silly. No, I have thought about it because I've posted jobs. I've thought about the times that I've gone on Upwork to look for shooters and editors and designers and whatever, but I forgot that it works the opposite way. It works the opposite I'm, way, and it's yeah. And it's it's actually a really great way to to get into the industry, right? Yeah, because you you find people who like yourself who are you know very well established, very successful, who are looking for to bring on people, and you get to learn along the way, you know. And if you can impress one person like yourself, you know, they have friends that you know, and it grows and it snowballs. Yeah, and I mean something like Upwork is a good example of like, you know, if I'm a business owner. And I have no connection with any videographers. You know, I might go on LinkedIn and post something, or I might go on Facebook and post something, and I might go on a site like Upwork and post something because I'm like, oh, I just, where, where I just need some people to contact me. Uh, you, you, there probably are, and your your kind of testimony is that like there are some diamonds in the rough that are like hey, these are good clients, and they actually need good video, you know, work done for them, and uh, and and it works. I think that's that's really smart. Yeah, it was. It's been great, really. Um, and like you said, you know, these people don't know what to do in, in these yeah. situations, right? And so they'll bring you on as almost a consultant sometimes, and then they will always come back to you when they have questions, right? And that's why you know you go on Upwork and you find somebody local, you make that connection, and you know they'll come back for more. They will always come back for more because it's easier. It's easier for them to come back to you than to go ahead and start the process all over. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, tell me. I would love to hear about like what's what's been one of the most meaningful projects that you've been a part of. I've been a part of a lot of really cool, meaningful projects, but um, I'll give you give you two examples. Um, and these are documentary projects that I worked on. Um, that's really what where my passion lies is in documentary filmmaking. I studied journalism in college um, and really got into filmmaking while I was in college. Um, and I worked on a, a, a short documentary film um, in I think of like my junior year. And I worked with this really amazing like videographer. This guy had picked up the camera like three months before this project and oh was gosh. just a natural. He was, he's, uh, he was unbelievable. He still is very, very good. He's got a wedding business down in the Bay Area now and he's very successful with that. Um, we worked on this documentary called Dreamer, uh, Boxing for DACA. And it was in 2016 during, um, you know, the President Trump's election and how he was trying to break down DACA and, you know, kick out, you know, Mexican immigrants and stuff like that. And there was this kid, you know, he's about 20 years old. And he was going to become a professional boxer. And he was really inspired by Muhammad Ali to kind of be this boxer to fight for a cause. Right. And so we followed him for three months leading up to his you know boxing debut and covered him kind of talking about, uh, you know, being this this Mexican boxer and having to kind of prove himself and literally fight to stay into this country, right? Mm. Um, and we ended up submitting it to film festivals. You know, we got into a couple, uh, you know, international student film festivals, and we won one. It was a great, um, great weekend we had in Chicago for this film festival. Definitely one of like the most inspiring mm. weekends of my life, and really kind of catapulted my career. Cause I graduated with no job um, and a film camera. And I was like, what am I going to do? Can I actually do this? I 
I was sitting there thinking, did I just ruin my life studying journalism <laughs> and, and film and not having anything set up? Like, you know, I was so used to being go, go, go in college, but this film kind of like set me on this path and I'm getting off topic here, but I'll get back to this, this moment. So this is an international film festival and there's all these, these young, you know, filmmakers from all over the world coming into Chicago. It was, it was in 2019 during the, the polar vortex. It landed, it was negative 50 degrees outside. Oh coldest, I, I'm from California. It was the coldest weather I had ever been in. I never, I had flights canceled because of it. I did find a different flight to get in, but we won this, I won this award and it was the Vincentian uh, Award for Social Impact. And at that moment I realized I wanna be doing work that changes people's lives, right? Yeah that can inspire people to, to either change their mindsets about something or change policy or something like that. So that was always really like where I wanted to go. And then the second one is uh, right after that, um, I got a call and asked by this, this is, this is the craziest story, by this Nigerian like millionaire, if I could produce his African sports show um, and we, I got, I went into this interview and he's like, tell me, he's like, yeah, I want to start interviewing African athletes, you know, cause I feel like they're really underrepresented in sports, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, we talked for about an hour or two and we hang up the phone. He's like, okay, I got a couple more people to interview. Um, you know, I'll, I'll call you later. You now, know? Let me just interrupt real quick. Yeah. If, if I've ever gotten an email, the guy says he's from Nigeria <laughs> and he's a millionaire. Uh, I don't respond. So I'll just, I'm just going to throw that out there, but this I, is the difference between getting the job and not getting the job. Go ahead and continue. No, this, that is look, look. So I, he was vetted for luckily. So he, the host of the show was the guy who uh, hired me for my internship in college. So I knew, I knew him. Okay. Uh, okay. So I, right. I knew that this guy was somebody that is legit. It's not just some Nigerian prince trying to scam. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because that happens a lot in the film industry too. But um, so I go to this interview and, you know, I, I'm thinking, you know, this is a big project. He wants to do all this, all this stuff. I just graduated college. Who, who am I? What do I know? Yeah. Right. A month goes by. I start working for the public broadcasting company, producing a show for them, you know, another very low budget show. Um, and I get a call out of the blue. Hey, we're heading off to London next week. Are you in? And there's a pause and I say, hell yeah. And the next week we're off in London interviewing two-time Super Bowl champion Osi Umiara. Um, and it snowballed into this two and a half year project where I did, we did three seasons of this interview show and then the pandemic hit and we started doing these mini documentary series on, on athletes in the US. And I, I traveled all over the world for this. It was insane. I couldn't believe like the opportunity that happened, right? But I left and it let and it set me off to where I am now. That's awesome. So with that story, like what is your what is your advice to someone who um would love an opportunity like that? But also, you know, you you were kind of like, Who am I? You know, I just graduated. I don't know, I don't know anything. Uh, do you need to get that? No, no, it's fine. Sounds sounds important. Um <laughs> You know, how would you speak into into somebody's life that that would would be in a similar spot as you, saying like, I, I mean, is this for real? Like, why would they hire me out of all of the people that they could hire? It's a tough one. I, I think a lot of it is, is it comes down to that confidence, right? And I think in, in this case, right, it's being open to opportunities, right? Like your first reaction when you heard, you know, a Nigerian millionaire is. I don't want to be anywhere near it. Like it sounds like a scam, right? right? But you really do have to be open to opportunities and almost manifest things. I know that's like a, a bit out there at times, but like I really do believe in, in in manifesting and speaking into the world. Like I want this opportunity. I want something like this. You know, it was very, you know, like I said, it was this the sports documentary won me a social impact award. So then this guy came to me and was like, I want to make an impact at home by working with sports. So it all kind of flows together, right? And mm -hmm. you kind of have to like put that energy out into the world and you can't expect opportunities like that to happen if you haven't cultivated something like along that line, right? Um, I think what's really important for people to know, especially when they first start out is that 
You know, you're not going to really, you, you have to invest the time into the craft, right? You have to invest the time into creating that portfolio, putting yourself in a position to get those types of opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I, I feel like, you know, going along that too, it's like asking that question, like, okay, really, if that opportunity did present itself, what do I have to lose? Right. Yeah. Like if you say yes, like what do you have to lose? So you completely fail, whatever, what does that actually mean? I think a lot of times we just say like, oh, I, you know, I couldn't do it. Like I, I would screw it up. I don't have, I don't have the experience and whatever. And a lot of times that's just like, you know, it's imposter syndrome. We've all experienced it. Most of it's not true. Mm -hmm. And you are talented. You're way more talented than you believe. And, you know, I have people that like compliment things of our work, my work. I'm like, seriously, you, that's, that out of all of the things, like that's the thing that you like, like, I thought that was garbage. <laughs> you know, what about this? And, uh, you know, so even that, like people's perception, what they value, what they want, what they like, it's so much different than how we've been programmed and what we believe and, you know, all that stuff. So, you know, the first question is kind of like, well, what do you have to lose? And, uh, and then actually think through like, what, like, what is the worst thing? <laughs> that could happen if you do take the job. I remember there was a job uh, quite a few years ago. The University of Michigan was doing, uh, I think, oh, is it, you know, it was a total rebrand. And it was like the branding department of the entire university. Um, we, and we had done a few different jobs with the university. And they wanted us to bid on this job. And not, I, I hate bidding on jobs. So that aside, um, we had bid on jobs with them and won them. But this one, as I read through the description of what they were, they were looking for, I looked at my team and kind of read it over with them. I'm like, this is not us. This is like commercial production. I remember having these thoughts. I'm like commercial production level. Like this is like so beyond, you know, we, if we quoted this, it would probably be like quarter of a million dollars. Like no way we're just, I'm not doing it. I mean, this is going to be a waste of time. It's going to be a ton of work. And I remember after the deadline for the, the proposals uh, were supposed to be submitted. I got, uh, I think, a text message from the, the brand manager because I actually knew the brand manager. And he's like, hey, he's like, I was expecting to see, you know, proposal coming through from you. And I was like, ah, you know, I'm like, it sounded like way out of reach. And he's like, man, he's like, I'm really disappointed. I really was hoping you and he, he was basically saying, like, you guys could have had this job if you really wanted right. it. But but I had and I was a decade plus into doing this work. So if anybody should have confidence in like, you know, landing big jobs and having big opportunities, and I'd already had, you know, a six figure project under my belt. And so it wasn't like new territory for me, but I I believed those voices and those things that was like this this is too big for you, Ryan. Like you, you know, and at the end of the day, the thing that I had to lose in my mind, it wasn't, it wasn't like Oh, we're going to flop the project. <laughs> well, actually, I didn't believe we could do the project. So, uh, Jordan, thank you for letting me, like, you know, kind of process this out loud with you. <laughs> no um, worries. I, I did know that it was going to take a lot of time. So I was, I was afraid of spending a lot of time on something that I just didn't believe that uh, we were good enough, that we were the right team, even though we've hired contractors and directors and DPs and whatever. I just, I was like, man, this is like, this is a big, big animal or a big elephant or big, too big, bite. how do you say that? Too big of a bite to, to yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we get the picture. Yes. You get the picture. Well, Jordan, this has been fun, man. I'm so glad that we were able to do this. Um, where, where can people find you online and follow the work that you're doing and what you got going on? Yeah. You can check me out on, you know, Instagram, you know, JSB underscore video. Uh, you can follow my website, www.jsbvideo.com. Um, you know, those are pretty much the places that you can find me. Um, Upwork, you know, <laughs> I'm going to post a job on there. I'll probably be uh, applying for it. I like to go all over the country. So, you know, um, I'm always up, up, open to different opportunities and things like that. That's great. Well, hey, man, I'm, I'm excited for you and I wish you all the best in your endeavor to uh, make impactful films that uh, change the world to make it a better place. So here's to you, my friend. Appreciate it, Ryan. Thank you for having me. Thank you. My friend, thanks for hanging out. Don't forget to check the show notes for any links or references from this episode. And I'd love to hear from you. If you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, leave a comment and let me know what is your big takeaway from this episode. 
once you write it down or type it out, it's actually more likely to happen. It's science. I'm pretty sure it's science. Like when you write something down, uh, a goal, you know, something that you want to do, it is more likely that it will happen than if you don't. Also, remember to join our free community. Go to studiosherpas.com slash community. And if you need anything in the meantime, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can find me or email me. How about that? You can find my email. You can email me, ryan at studiosherpas.com. Let me know if there's anything I can do to make this show better. And I hope uh, to see you soon. Hope to see you on the next episode. How about that? Have an amazing week. I'll talk to you real soon. See ya.